rise for the Pledge of Allegiance.
information from an old cabin or an old house in Dugwell, uh, approximately two thirds of the way south from the north end of that property on the western side, um, the, the south where the Tri Town Trail is going to be. Uh, I did make the uh, Historic Commission aware of it. Um, it's difficult to find, but uh, I'll be happy to go up here and find it again. Uh, third point is uh, whatever we do on the eastern side of that property, uh, it should, we should, we must. and your ideas. Thank you. Any other uh, public comments? <clears throat> Committee commission and board reports? Yes. Good evening, Mike Ferry, Clyde Whirlblad. You're representing WPCA. We met last night. I'm not going to steal off the phone. Thunder, I know we've also been talking about it. But we've set a public hearing date public comment on the wastewater facility study of 29 July. Uh, 15 days before that, the report will be available to the public in the library and in the town clerk's office and then I can went to. Uh, I know you're discussing your summer schedule later this evening and we would like to come to your meeting July 23rd to discuss Press releases we'll be working on, and uh, the chairman can meet with the mayor to make sure that we're coordinating our efforts. But I know summertime is fun to try and coordinate with all the committees, so I want to say we are headed that way. Thank you. Um, comments of town councilors? Yes. Uh, I'm saddened to report the uh, death of Linda Krause. Linda was our town planner for many yeah. years. Pleased to congratulate the graduates of Ledyard High School. It was a beautiful evening for graduation. Really, really enjoyed all of the student graduate speeches as well as the principal's speech. It was just a really enjoyable evening. And it went in record time. So, beautiful night, great time. Yes. I'm going to get on my soapbox for just a couple of minutes here. Um, <laughs> Now's the time to. <laughs> I have had the occasion recently to travel back and forth between uh, Ledger and Yale New Haven.
Haven Hospital um, to visit someone who was in the hospital. And during, during that time on 95, uh, two particular things, you know, I've observed that just unbelievable. The number of people texting while they're driving is absolutely insane. And folks, pulling over into the slow lane is not licensed to text. Not only are you endangering yourself, you're endangering the rest of us. Please don't do that. Please don't text and drive. And the second issue is, maybe, maybe some of you have also seen this, but the, I, in the last three weeks, I have seen a huge increase in insane motorcycle stunts on the roads, on the public roads. People doing stuff that I wouldn't do on a dirt bike when I was riding dirt bikes. Um, right behind my car. Uh, bikers, you know, if you know guys that are doing this stuff, tell them to knock it off because they're going to get themselves killed. Um, I won't take the time to try to describe a couple of the incidents I saw, but they were act absolutely death-defying. And, you know, right next to cars. And just remember that you're not the only one on the road. Laws apply to you too, and, you know, they're there to keep us safe. That's my soapbox. Thank you. I, I, I just would add, add to that that it's ice swear that every day in the last week there has been a motorcycle accident reported either in the paper or on the 911 calls. Just, it's, it's just not a good thing. So. I ride motorcycles. I know you do. So I've And so seeing this kind of stuff just disgusts me. Thank you. Any guess? Uh, if I could just add something to, uh, to Steve's comment about the bikes. It's not just um, you. If you go down and get hurt, it's not just you you're affecting. It's uh, everyone that loves you, and it's the first responders that show up and got to pick that mess up. It affects a lot of people for your few moments of the fun on the road. Don't be so selfish and think of others. Any other comments? Yes. Just wanted to let everybody know um, the Ledger Youth League has got the opportunity to host an uh, two tournaments actually this this year, um, an under 12 baseball tournament, which is going to be at Blonders this year. I think it's the first time we've ever hosted it. That is June 21st to June 28th, and then the under nine tournament is July 5 to July 11, and that is at uh, Crandall Field and Gale Sturry. So if you have an opportunity and you have a youngster, take them out there. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, entertain a motion. To approve the minutes of July, June 11th. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Corrections provided, I'm sure. Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Sams? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Gaforty? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. You have your communications list, referrals, on to subcommittee reports admin. Administration committee has not met, nothing to the report. Okay, finance. Finance committee met uh, last week and all the other discussed during the day. Information technology. Information technology has not met. Land use planning. Same. Nice. Board of Education liaison. Yes, I'm reporting on the meeting of June 18th. Uh, may I start by saying I do not know why my reports show up uh, in such a scrambled fashion as they do uh, that on what you folks receive. Um, I'm working on eliminating that, but I apologize for it. But it tends to look more like a crossword puzzle than a liaison report. Um, the help desk is open. Well, that, that's, that's where I'm headed. I've tried for moving off my oh. Uh, first of all, uh, during the report of the superintendent of schools, uh, business manager Bill Merrill was thanked for his service. He is leaving Lincoln Public Schools, going on to another position. Uh, Kate DePalma, her, will be replacing Sharon Hightower, who's stepping down after 16 years of service. And each board member expressed uh, a great
great deal of praise and gratitude uh, for her leadership and, and other positive qualities. Uh, the board's strategic plan will be reviewed at an upcoming retreat. Um, the business manager's report indicated that uh, it appears that they are going to make it to the end of the fiscal year in, in without going into the red, though just barely. Um, there are some issues, uh, as was referenced in some of the correspondence we received. Uh, there's an issue about the Lydia High School water and sewer bill in dispute uh, because it is uh, it was described as twice as high as normal uh, for last month, and apparently from uh, correspondence we received, it may be the case for this month as well. And I know that's being looked into. Uh, and in somewhat good news, the health care costs were below uh, what was expected for the claims in both April and May. Um, there was a report on all day kindergarten data associated with reading in particular. Uh, very, very good news. Uh, students are learning to read independently in kindergarten instead of what has been typical, and that's grade one. And uh, based on the testing, uh, we have uh, uh, just a very few students who qualify for a remedial reading instruction. Uh, that we're doing uh, better and demonstrating the ability to do that. Um, under new business, the architect, Mr. Ireland, reviewed the summary he had provided for the board and answered questions. He indicated uh, this was on the, the issue of ed specs, education specs. Uh, he indicated that there still could be some changes made to those. Uh, and the, he articulated a couple of opportunities for additional funds to be available for the state. They may or may not be practical, but it included such things as out-of-town students at the elementary school and, and pre-kindergarten classes. Two new electives, one on genocide, one on pop culture, were approved for the high school uh, for next year. Uh, a swimming school, a swimming pool safety plan will go into effect on July 1st. Uh, there were revisions to employee health examination uh, policy, uh, basically eliminating the requirement that tuberculosis testing take place prior to employment. It's something that had been eliminated by surrounding districts uh, many years ago, uh, according to what we were told. And uh, paraprofessional handbook was accepted, and at which point the board entered executive session. And that's my report. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, two questions. One is, uh, you know, the email and class sizes, was there some of that? No, there was just a reference that there was an email regarding class sizes. Okay. The second is, uh, minutes, it said they didn't approve the safety plan for swimming pool and that they were going to address it in July, so I'm not sure how it would oh. affect July 1st and they didn't approve it yet. Well, that would be uh, my error. I'll go back and review the video. Um, I just read the minutes. I didn't look at the, the actual meeting. I'll go back. I'll reconcile that difference and I'll get back. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Bell. Yeah. Uh, just regarding the two new electives, is is that, are they, did the uh, board indicate if they were using an existing teacher to teach these two new classes? There was no, there was no discussion of a new teacher being hired. Uh, also uh, worth noting, neither one requires text, so there'll be no expenditure for materials of that nature. And these are both ain't have the purpose of the, the particulars of which electives they're instituting came from student surveys about what they would take in the hopes of getting more kids uh, out of uh, study hall, uh, which has been an issue they've been working on. Um, but, yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, if someone in the public wanted to see a copy of the uh, syllabus for one of those courses, is that available? Um, it, it must be, uh, well, it certainly exists and has been studied and approved by the Instructional Council. Um, and I think the curricula for any course um, is available to the public. Um, the exact mechanism of that I can find out and report, that be interesting. report next time. Thank you. So how, does, how does a member of the public access uh, the written curriculum? Any other questions? WPCA liaison report. WPCA did meet last night. Um, Mr. Dave Holdridge, uh, representing the Lanyard Ecclesiastical Society, uh, appeared with a project engineer to discuss ways of getting water to that product, property. Um, three ways are being considered. One is extending a main up uh, Route 117. It's considered to be cost prohibitive. Uh, a second option was to speak with the Southeastern Water Authority and uh, given the project needs, law said that they did not feel, or it was reported that they said they did not feel they could meet the requirements. The final option 
it's not ideal because the WPCA prefers not to run water mains over private property, but it's by far the least expensive. <coughs> discuss recent tree damage to the home burn property fence. This is the second time that a tree has fallen on the fence, so we discussed ways to uh, maybe prevent that. Uh, took no action, just discussed. Um, they also talked about uh, water, which was on the road at Hillcrest and Algin, and some meter complaints at Fox Run Apartments, and I believe they have a plan for those. Accounts receivable increased again. Now they stand at $78,000. Uh, but it was noted that the office staff has been shorthanded, uh, and that I personally believe is, is a direct impact on accounts receivable. If we don't have office staff making the calls, they tend to go up. But our expectation is with the cut over to uh, Brown Utilities doing the billing and monthly billing, we'll see that start to decline. Um, also, uh, the town sent out 358 letters regarding the uh, cross connect cross-connection study or inspection which is required by the state of Connecticut uh, informing the residents, uh, the, the ratepayers, that uh, they have to comply with this because it's a state public health mandate um, and 14 people so far have called and set up an appointment for cross-connection inspection so we talked, the WPCA continues to talk about uh, additional means of getting those inspections done. They, they have to be done, there's no choice. Um, so they're going to make another effort to residents of the need, and uh, uh, Groton Utilities is going to make additional rounds and attempt to do additional inspections. So for any folks listening, if you've been refusing, <laughs> it would be a good idea if you allowed Groton Utilities to come and inspect your well. Uh, what they're checking to see is if you have if you have public water and if you have a well, the state requires that we ensure that there is no connection between that well public water supply because that's a potential public health hazard to everyone who's on the water system. Um, also, the Algen Heights pump station has been running on generator power because CLNP has not met the deadline to provide power. Um, and the plan now is that we still have to do flushing, chlorinating, and testing, and that will be done on generator power if CLNP does not provide us power by the first week of July. Um, the WPCA also discussed it a letter to the tax collector regarding the assessment sent to some property owners who were affected by the delay in the Avery Hill pump station, um, and they also approved the final assessment list for the project. And finally, the, the McGuire Group has completed their report to the WPCA. Some members of the WPCA attended a tour of the sewer plant last week. The report addresses several serious issues facing the plant that have been put off for several years. The plant was originally built in the 1960s, it was upgraded in 1997, and some of that equipment that was installed in 1997 is now approaching its end of life. Um, there are no major issues in danger of immediate failure at this time, and it's been that way for a few years now, but we do have to do something to, uh, to maintain and, and upgrade that plant, really keep it status quo, I, I should use the word upgrade. Um, prudent investment now would avoid catastrophic Sitting down, I have some numbers for you. Uh, the first number is what it will cost to keep that plant in good health. That's a million dollars, something we need to do soon. Um, the 20 year plan to provide sewer to uh, Ledger Center, uh, Christie Hill, and uh, my report is wrong, I mentioned Ledger Center twice. The other area is Elgin Heights, um, is in excess of $90 million. Um, so we think the public may want to weigh in on that. Uh, therefore, as, as uh, Mr. Cherry explained, there will be a public hearing scheduled for July 29th. And we would like to, uh, the WPCA would like to appear on the July 23 town council agenda to share a summary of, of that study. And that's my report. Any questions? So 
water tank maintenance is just like sewer plant maintenance. If you don't pay now, you pay a lot more in the future. Um, an additional comment, we don't have to spend $90 million. We do have to spend a million. Um, the $90 million is optional uh, with the plan. But what the plan looks at is, what if there were major failures in densely populated neighborhoods? What would we do um, 10 years out, 20 years out, 30 years out? So this is a plan for what we should be thinking about for the future. That's the, the big dollar, right? But to fix that plan, to maintain the water tank, is uh, both of those are less than a million dollars. But we do have to think about that. Is there a... Uh
summarize, summarize the email to you. For the school project, there was discussion over several months at the building committee that if you submitted the education specifications for the school project, that there would be a placeholder put uh, or a whole basically to establish the reimbursement. There was a discussion several meetings ago. Uh, an individual pointed out, uh, Mr. Kilpatrick actually pointed out, that that had changed, uh, but the architect uh, insisted that it had not. Uh, well, today or in the last week, they found out that in fact had changed, and it was a town that had routinely submitted projects to get a placeholder, and then the next year would pull them back because they didn't get approval. And that happened a sufficient number of times that the state said they're not going to do that anymore. So the requirement that the state says in order to block in your reimbursement rate is the town must approve the project before it's submitted. Uh, you can submit them, but you, you'll get a temporary number, but it won't block in your reimbursement rate so it, because it's not officially a project until the town actually obligates via referendum for the funds. So I would just add that for some of us who wondered why North Stonington was feverishly trying to get their project approved before June 30th, but Ledger didn't seem concerned about getting it approved before June 30th. It's that they had the right answer and we had the wrong answer, I guess, what it boils down to. Uh, that would be what it boils down to. It was, a, it was basically a, 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 the architect had advised a certain way, and that was the way, not that long, but it was a relatively recent change. But uh, we didn't make the call to the state until this week to find out that that was the case. Thank you. Pension board met uh, last week on June 17th, a uh, routine meeting. It was uh, the fiduciary investment advisors, which are advisors to our pension plan, provided a quarterly report. Uh, it was a fairly positive report, and we approved one for retirement benefit. Any questions? Uh, ad hoc committee to review the zoning regulations. Uh, ad hoc committee to meet last week. Uh, we started going through the things. Uh, first thing we do is reorganize. Use table, uh, make it look more like what Broughton has so that there's a few more pages. It's much easier to read because it's by uh, section. So that's the first thing we're going to work on. And we're also start working on several of the other regulations and come along with this out. Very good. Very good. Any questions? Report of the mayor. Thank you. Oh, so, wait, I'm sorry. A liaison report. Yes. Okay. I'm the liaison um, to the library commission. And they meet monthly, and they usually rotate libraries uh, to hold their meetings. And um, this month, uh, they met at the Gales Ferry Library. Prior to the meeting, they were invited by Leanne Jeanette, who is the president of the Gales Ferry District, formerly called the Gales Ferry Fire District, to tour the community center. It seems that they have a limited number of volunteers, they kind of have this building sitting there, and they feel like um, somebody should use it, somebody being probably, or possibly the library commission to do, you know, perhaps expand um, what they have. Um, and so the library commission were like kids in a candy store. Like, wow, what can we do here? So I asked Lee, has she contacted the town? And she said, no. I said, well, I think you really need to write a letter to the mayor, you know, saying that, you know, inviting us to perhaps come up with some ideas for the use of the building. And I said, are you interested in selling the building? No. They don't want to sell the building, but they look on it as a community asset. So finally today at 4 o'clock, I got a copy of the uh, letter from the, fire, from the district explaining um, what they want what they're willing to do. The district is prepared to offer a long-term 99-year lease to the library for the building for a dollar a year. In return, the library would take over operating, staffing, and any renovation expenses. Should the library feel compelled to move out, the building would refer, refer it back to the district. And this has been approved by the executive board of the Galesbury District. They have uh, polled some of the residents of the area and members, I guess, of the, of the district who are all think this is a great idea. They just don't want the building going, you know, left without being used. So
so the library, so we actually advised the library commission not to do anything until something came in writing. So I think now they'll probably come up with some ideas as to how they can possibly use it. So I'm just giving you kind of a heads up. Nothing has been done at the moment. Okay. I know, if I know there's like nine questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have any early. answers. No answers, so don't bother. Drop them yeah. too <laughs> early. It's right. It's too early. I will keep you posted again. I advise them not to do anything more because we had nothing official in hand. And, you know, you can't really just go off <laughs> making plans. Go ahead, Mr. Grant. You can't tell personals. Well, I, I guess just to comment, it's not really a question. My, con my concern is it sounds like going to look at the building, that the district failed to maintain the building. It's, it's fallen into some disrepair of some sort. That they're, they're, they're implying that there's maintenance that has to be done in the lever. Um, and they said they did major renovations. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I'm just told by what you read in the letter that there was maintenance requirements. In it. So no, I, no. If we take it on, there would be. The district is prepared in return the library would take over. If the library, they mean the town. Right. Operating, staffing, and any renovation expenses. In other words, if the library the mean, okay. wanted to move a wall, add a wall, that's what So in the future, that. if they wanted to make changes to it, then got it. It would be on us. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, but she said they did, uh, they did do renovations. Yeah. I think there's a new roof. There's also a question about the, uh, there's, um, courts in the back, uh, tennis courts in the back. Uh, in closing, please know that turning over this historic building to the library is the first choice of options presented to the boards, to the board, and to friends and neighbors informally. And I would, I would just add that um, the process thing, if you're, to whoever you're talking to. I'm a member of the district, and I pay taxes. I don't know how the board can make this decision without a vote of the the, the members of the district. Okay, wait a minute. Um, the executive board. Galesbury District. The board presented this option to members at the recent annual meeting on May 28th, where there was much enthusiasm expressed. We have also been inquiring neighbors about their ideas for the building and a library expansion with programs offered in the main space was highly recommended. So if you want, you know. Again, I think it's Paying taxes. I, 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 I've done battle. No, I've done battle over the years. I'm paying like a hundred dollars more than anybody else in town. The district is, and if we're turning it over to the town, what is my hundred dollars paying for? That's my question. John knows this is his own topic. He can't help but laugh. I know I'm paying for street lights. I know that's what I'm paying. For. <laughs> okay. And I just give you heads up. My blood pressure just went up a notch. <laughs> A longer meeting. Uh, let's see. That's right. The report of the mayor, please. Okay, thank you. And, and I'm sure the district very much appreciates that the Davises pay the tax. That's right. Uh, okay, I appreciate the report by uh, Councilman McGratton. And just, just to say, uh, Library Director Gail Bradner, Bradbury did give me a heads up on this. And uh, what I told my staff is that they should put together a proposal of potential uses, costs, you know, if, if that's something they want to pursue. Uh, certainly, uh, I just got the letter, the formal letter. They also told the district that we needed a letter, and you have that letter now. Uh, we just sent that to you, so you can read it over and uh, look at that. I agree, the pro there needs to be a process, and that's why I have in there, uh, you know, proposal of potential costs, uses, authorizations, and funding. In other words, what has to be done for something like this to happen? Uh, and I think this will certainly precipitate, uh, you know, a discussion on uh, uh, on this issue. 
Uh, and again, very preliminary. There's no plans or proposals. It was just just brought to us this week. Uh, there is an energy, an electric uh, energy audit letter that all residents will be receiving uh, from CLMP uh, about an offer to perform an energy audit. It's a letter that's signed by me uh, because I do endorse this. Uh, and there will also be a flyer that will go out with all of the tax bills, uh, all of the costs for the flyer, the letter, the mailing uh, will be borne by Northeast Utilities. And basically this letter is something I mentioned before. It encourages residents to take advantage of a program uh, which will result in savings to homeowners and at the same time credits to the town. The town already has $10,000 in credits which we will be applying to an energy uh, project. Uh, for example, uh, if you, if you uh, were to take advantage of this, and the fees are up to $99, I think most homes would be $75, and some would be $99. The fee would be waived if, if for el uh, income eligible uh, individuals. But what you get out of it, besides the audit and recommendations, is you know they replace all of the lights, uh, light bulbs in your home. Uh, they install water saving devices, low flow, high pressure shower heads and aerators and they uh, use technology to seal up air, leak, uh, air leaks in your home, uh, door sweeps, weather stripping and caulking. So there certainly is, is a value added to your home. So I would just tell everyone this is legitimate and it's something we would certainly encourage you to consider. Uh, the ACO facility, I know it's been again a while since uh, we had a second field walk there. The status of the repairs or the cost of the repairs is still pending. Uh, an assessment by Public Works. This unfortunately is a very busy time in terms of maintenance with the springtime and summer and getting some things done. Uh, I expect to be able to present information to the Finance Committee at their July meeting. Uh, that being said, I do believe there was a general interest by uh, those of us who were at these field walks uh, to consider the magnitude of the total improvements and maintenance that needs to be done uh, to maintain the current ACO services at that location. Uh, and I will tell you that there are regional discussions that are ongoing uh, concerning the possibility of offering regional ACO services. Uh, and I've been approached to join in these discussions and uh, will certainly keep the council informed so we can make the appropriate decisions. Uh, we, uh, I participated in a hurricane drill as did uh, uh, Chairman Davis and several who were uh, who were involved in uh, in the theme of this year, which was really to uh, help those that may need a, uh, special assistance uh, during a storm. Uh, that was the focus of this. Uh, the town has done many things in order to prepare for that. We've had discussions about shelters. We've had discussions about transportation. The council approved. Uh, uh, using a grant to install uh, uh, automatic uh, chains on our two vans. So we're certainly geared up. It's a lesson learned from one of the storms where we did have to transfer individuals and we kind of did an ad hoc uh, procedure to do that. So there were, there were many issues that were identified and addressed and some that uh, need to be resolved. So again, it was a good exercise. It was statewide. Uh, we were in communication with the state uh, EMDs, the governor, and uh, so it, it was very well received. Uh, health insurance, uh, there will be a shortfall for this fiscal year, which ends on Monday, uh, but what we're, we're going to do is notify uh, the people that pay our claims that to see if they can just delay paying any more of the claims until next Tuesday when we get a new infusion of money uh, from the fiscal year 1415 in budget. So it looks like we came in very, very close. Uh, as uh, Councilor Gabordi mentioned, the last couple of months we saw, you know, uh, lower than estimated claims, and so we were able to make it through, uh, you know, just about flat with uh, where we went. Uh, the, what that means is the reserve fund is gone. But again, we didn't have to take out anything from our uh, surplus or from our unexpected and unexpended funding uh, to make that. So uh, that's good. Hopefully next year 
we'll see some significant reductions uh, that will help us not be in this situation again. That's my report. Any questions for the mayor? Wow. Okay, old business, item number one. Mr. Franz? Okay. Uh, finance, item number one, under new business. Oh, I'm sorry, does anybody wish to um, amend the agenda at this time? Under new business, item number one. Make a motion to impose a $300 maximum limit on petty charge purchases for fiscal year 2015 for section 9, petty charge and emergency limitations of town and labor ordinance 133 and ordinance of ending an ordinance for purchasing. Second. Quick discussion. Briefly, this is an uh, annual requirement to establish the limit uh, for petty charges uh, routine. It's been a $300 limit for many, many years. Further discussion? Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Sams? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Domestic? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Cavorty? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Recognize me. What? I was nice to you twice. You were, yeah, you were, I was the first one. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, item number two. Make a motion to approve bid waivers, including the standing bid waiver list for FY15, dated June 18, 2014, for participation in the Capital Region Purchasing Council bids, for participation in the State of Connecticut bids, for participation in other states' bids, and for participation in federal government agency bids. Second. Discussion? There was a significant discussion of the uh, standing bid waiver list. Uh, we removed six or seven items from that list and were not necessary some of the long-standing contracts uh, that would uh, be beneficial to go out for rebid. Um, there were uh, several uh, line items, one line item that was planned uh, for to change uh, vendors at the end of the time. So by leaving it on the standing bid waiver list, we were basically removing the authority of the council to have a say in bid six. So we reduced that down. Um, and there were several that were added Vendor of choice uh, is always less than the state bid list, uh, but in that case, you grant a bid waiver. There's no discussion. It's not uh, as if so. By if we had granted a bid waiver for it in that case, then if you know, Acme uh, vendor comes in at a lower cost, the council would have no say. They could go with the vendor we benefited and have a say. So we, I think the bid waiver list that is there is appropriate. Reduced both for last year's list as well as what was submitted for this year. And to clarify, in addition to the bid, bid waiver list, the other areas we have, the council bids, the state of Connecticut bids, other states' bids, those are government approved lists that are generally less, uh, less costly because they can uh, drive quantity of bids. So that, that's why those are on the list, in addition to the list that we have for the town for local. Any questions, discussion? This time I have to recall the very lively discussion we used to have between Mr. Diaz and Mr. Uh, and Mrs. Uh, Wadecki. Um, Mr. Diaz would be very happy with what you did with the budget because, boy, they used to go at it over this. We, we had the long discussion in Mr. Diaz's honor. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. That, that was noted by Councilor Sons. It was? Yeah, yes, 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 it was. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the phrase was. Uh, uh, Jim Diaz would be proud. Yes. yes. Well, there you go. Okay, Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mr. Sams? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Gaborty? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGrath? Yes. And I in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Item number three. Make a motion to authorize the carryover in the amount of $5,000 from FY14 to FY15 in account number 101 130 for continued work on wetlands mapping. Second. Discussion. Uh, briefly, the in the FY14 budget, there was thirteen thousand dollars set aside in the budget to do GIS improvements. Uh, of that, uh, five thousand dollars remains of work to be done. It was not expended. Uh, the work has been contracted, uh, but it's not been completed. And so uh, the council believes 
but since that work was FY14 authorized work and carrying that over to finish the work is appropriate. Any questions? Roxanne Calderon. Yes, Roxanne. Um, I Motion to approve the following products to be eligible for tax credits under the Neighborhood Assistance Act and AA tax credits, parks and recreation, walking track steps, handicap accessibility improvements at Lincoln Middle School, and AA requests $150,000, total cost $210,000, parks and recreation trail improvements, Glacial Park and Whitehall Park, large parking areas, Colonel Ledger Trail, Burton Property Trail, Christmas Trail, clean up, general cleanup improvements, and AA funds $60,000, total cost $100,000. We surfaced the apparatus pavement at the Gales Ferry Fire Company facility located at 1772 Route 12. Gales Ferry NA requests $45,000, total cost $75,000. In addition, recommend the Town of Ledger authorize the expenditure of up to 40% of the cost of the following projects for the Ledger Parks and Recreation Capital Non Recurring Fund 0203 at a special town meeting of which the date will be determined upon the approval of the NAA program application for the following projects. Parks and Recreation, Walking Track Steps, Handicap Accessibility Improvements at Lincoln Middle School, NAA requests $150,000, total cost $210,000. Parks and Recreation, Trail Improvements, Glacial Park and Whitehall Park, and large parking areas, Colonel Ledger Trail, Burton Property Trail, Christmas Trail, General Cleanup and Improvements, NAA funds $60,000, total cost $100,000. Second. Uh, first, and the uh, fund is actually the uh, two, it was funded, now it's 203. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Any, any amendments? <coughs> the first discussion, um, we, as Councilor Solomon alluded to, we had significant discussion through several finance committees of process approval, essentially the, the Parks and Recs Commission, well, no, let me rephrase, the Parks and Recs Director brought forward these plans. Neither the, part, no, neither the Parks and Recs Commission Conservation Commission or the Board of Ed had any say other than an ad hoc correspondence via email, maybe phone calls and discussions. Um, and so the, the initiation of this was uh, there's a Boy Scout that is doing an Eagle Scout project in one of these locations, and that generated the initial thought, and then there was you know, the piggyback process to get there. Um, the, process is, it, it is, is frustrating in that um, Mr. Cherry brings up a valid point that the budget was approved, uh, the SIP was approved, and this was not part of that process. Uh, so there's no chance for discussion. Uh, and given that, then you, if you're looking backing up from the budget process and the hearings in March, then you really need to have this project thought out in this November, December, January to go through each of the commissions in order to be ready for the SIP. The comment I would make on the SIP is when this came up, I went and looked at the SIP because Parks and Rec claimed there was sufficient money in their fund, but the SIP didn't indicate there was any balance in there. So we need to make sure also that we carry forward the balances from, from each one of the funds. Um, another thing that I noticed tonight is on the, the first item for Parks and Rec, the, actually the amounts are incorrect. 60% of 210000 is only 126000 or $150,000. So they're, on the surface, it's not the correct amount. But going back to what uh, Mr. Greasy uh, essentially, after explaining the projects he recommended, uh, he was recommending that the process be allowed to come through its formal process, go through each of the commissions, give details on what the projects are going to be. So we have no details on any of the projects, even know whether this is too much money, too little money, don't have any idea because there's no even notional idea of what needs to be done. Now, the Conservation Commission, in fairness, has talked about uh, some of these projects. They do have an idea of what those are. Uh, but you know, in order to comply with all the requirements, as Mr. Chair aptly pointed out, the, the, the review required for improvements to town property as opposed to just maintenance, which some of these uh, ideas are, needs to happen in order to ensure that if the money comes in and then it goes through review and is denied, now we you know, basically have corporate money sitting idle that they've made commitments to. Um, 
So I guess what, what for those two projects, my recommendation would be that we take those off, allow the commission and the board to come forward with a, a proposal of what the project is, have it go through them, go through the planning and zoning for any particular areas that are actually improvements and not just maintenance. Um, and I think that uh, one of the things that can be helpful, we know that Eagle Scouts are doing projects on town property. They did uh, you know, the properties up on the uh, trails up on Shuva not that long ago. Uh, and I think they do have a work. I think that we need to do a better job of trying to link up with them to support that effort to ensure that as they're doing their Eagle Park, we can get full benefit of that project uh, through efforts like this. Yeah, it was a fund, and um, you can correct me, it was a fund set aside by Sidney Hall when he set aside the 20 acres of Whitehall Park for the town yeah. for improvements, maintenance, whatever. Yeah. It was, it, he left $20,000 right. to control uh, invasive uh, plants such as Altura Rose and the... So it can only be used for that? Um, it's not for me to say it can only be used for that, but that, that was the use that was mentioned in, in his will. And, uh, so that was the money set aside. I was going to suggest why not use that to enlarge your parking lot. Okay, I, I should. That, that's yeah. why we did not, that's why we have not used it for the parking lot. We, we've been talking about it increasing the size of the parking lot for years. So it's it, it getting more than three if you get three carts in there, it's difficult to take them back out again, you know, unless you take them back out the same in the opposite order. Mr. Uh, in light of Mr. Greening's comments earlier, uh, I would be loath to force him to spend money that he's not 100% behind at this point. It's actually the Parks and Rec's commission responsibility. They have not voted, actually, to fund that. Because that's the process that part of the detail, but the only place that that project is mentioned is in the April uh, Parks and Rec Director's Report. And in there it states that the Parks and Rec Commission must take action. They didn't meet in April, they met in May. The April, met, April Parks and Director Report was added after the meeting, so the Parks and Rec Commission never actually saw as part of the meeting uh, there's any record of that. Uh, and then they didn't take action. So, Parks Rates Commission hasn't authorized the expenditure of that, those funds. So, so I think every one of these projects is a great idea. Yes. However, I think this is very premature. Would anybody like to amend the motion? Mr. Saunders. I would like to amend the motion to, should I read it? As it should be another Can I just say it was line one and two? Right. We also remove the second half, which is authorized in the expenditure. Right. All reference to projects one and two. Correct. Right. Right. And is there a second to that second amendment? Then. Any discussion on the amendment? Roxanne, would you call the roll on the amendment? Um, Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Gavorti? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Sons? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Uh, are you ready to vote on the main motion? Uh, I'd like yes. to make a comment about that. Yes. Okay. I'm just going to reread re the, the new motion. Okay. And then we okay. can have a discussion on it. Okay. Motion to approve the following project to be eligible for tax credits under the Neighborhood Assistance Act. Tax credits resurface the apparatus pavement at the Gales Ferry Fire Company facility located at 1772 Route 12. The Gales Ferry NA requests $45,000 total cost of $75,000. So my, my comment without reiterating everything to the public hearing is that the Finance Committee considered not moving on this given the haste, the short time frame, and the date of the public hearing being required to, to be held before the end of the fiscal year. Um, but we decided to post the public hearing and have the hearing anyway because uh, we felt it was instructive as an example of how a process should be followed. Um, and I, I want to compliment Chief Sacone on the fact that <coughs> did follow the process, and he always follows the process, and he was here to answer questions, and there was no rush. Um, I, I want to recall Councillor Sharon Wadecki's words, it's never a good idea to do something in a hurry, uh, and this is a good example of it. Thank you.
Any further discussion? Yes. Just one quick thing on that. I just echoing uh, Chairman Davis's comment earlier. We we did permit this to go forward, but in the future, we with what we spend on public notices in in the, in the uh, print media, we cannot and will not continue to advance projects that aren't fully vetted and ready for this stage. So this was this was the one this was the one trial. Well said. Any further comments? Yes. We haven't talked about the project that's now in the motion. The $30,000, the uh, Galesbury Fire Company is a private entity. $30,000 is not town funds. It is a, a amount of money they have in their control. They have voted as an entity to authorize. They have $60,000 available. So that is pri they have already uh, committed that $30,000 that is the share of uh, the project under the Neighborhood Assistance Act. Thank you. Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. suggested that we put in the word plan so that not more than one half of the membership is expired. The reason being that we don't really have control over when members resign. Correct. No, so, no, no, exactly. No. So section two membership shall now read the WBCA shall consist of five regular and three alternate members who are elected to the town, each of whom shall serve for a term of three years until a successor is appointed uh, for a term of three years. Um, and plan, how would you want to put that? I, I think the first sentence is fine. I think yeah. what you would do with the second sentence is that uh, something to the effect of normal terms um, would be staggered, staggered so that. Yeah, okay, there we go. Half. So normal terms. Normal terms would be staggered such that uh, no, more, no than more than one half of the membership shall expire within a year. Our plan to expire. Our plan to expire. Yeah. Now, is that just the regular members? Is it the alternate members? Is it, the, is it are they two separate groups? In other words, I can't. No, the alternates don't. I don't think it counts because it's, it's only the regulars. Although the statute is pretty broad. I thought the statute said full membership. I'm going to let Mr. Cherry make a comment. I think Huckler Saab hit the nail on the head with the discussions with Mr. Jones. What you're talking about is appointments replacements need to be established such that no more than one half expire in a year. Because you control the appointments. You don't control the resignations. Correct. So if you say appointments 
appointment term should be staggered such that no more than one half expire in any given year. Yeah. Right. That way you can set a term longer than right. what it's or shorter here. or yeah. yeah. So if, if it looks like you're going to have three people, that's the key number. If three people resign, we fail. So if it looks like more than two resign in the same year, we have to extend someone's term when we make an appointment. Correct. And that's allowed by statute anyway. Yeah. Because it's or as or when replaced. Right. That's why we have the regular members, the alternate members, or the combined. Because three would be the number that's just the regular members. If it's both together, it's four.
One second, what? I don't know. You know so the only thing that I've ever seen for the IPCA and the, the budget this year in the discussion of yeah. the budget. So, so, there, so there, there, there is a profit and loss report that's provided every month. And I would think a statement of financial health, like a, like a normal you know, balance sheet and a yeah. day out, I think is, is what we want to see. We want to see the financial health of the organization. Um, I think if we want more than that, so that would it's hard to specify. I just put it in a yeah, format, yeah, yeah, content format, uh, in accordance with draft for the uh, requirements provided by the council, and then you can. Or, or is there is there a standard like an IEEE standard, standard or some standard for reporting for that you could reference? I'm sure there is, but realize you have eight volunteers now. You're asking for a corporate annual report. Yeah, I know we have so, to with that. So. Yeah. Asking the question, we're going to say we're going to have an annual report, at least annual. What's it going to be, yeah. and is it sufficient? Why can't it be the chairman standing in front of you saying, "Hey, everything's good"? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you'll we'll see that report. report <laughs> I mean, I think of the like the building committee. They they're supposed to come, and Steve Joskowitz has come, okay. and he's given a report. And we haven't asked him to be specific as to what he reports, but he comes and he gives us a good report. Yeah, I think really what we're asking. Asking for is hey, what's the status? Where are you where are you going? What are you doing? What have you done? Where are you hanging out? Where are you hanging out? You know, just where what what do you see as the future plan of that kind but of thing? The WPCA is an enterprise fund, yes, sure. and it should have a statement of financial health. I right. totally agree with that. We kind of do one every month, right. profit and loss, but we should have a wrap up for the year. Right. That's my take. Yeah. Yeah. In deference to the building committee, they're not collecting funds. They're not right, because we can get so. that stuff all in line. We're audited once a year on what we produce. So I guess we'd have to look at when the fiscal year finally closes and all the all the receipts are in. I think that's sometime around September. And when the audit report comes in, so all that can be wrapped up into something that makes sense. As long as it says annual and it doesn't say by the 15th of November or something, you know, the yeah, I'm not looking to be onerous and create think, a burden on the staff, the volunteers that are, that I are think serving the town. What you need is the first report. Right. Well, let, let me remind you, too, that the ordinance does say as requested. So mm -hmm. if there is some particular something going on, some new development project, we can make a request that they come and report on that, too. Well, I'm not denying that. I'm, I'm looking at the annual report. Oh, what's the annual report? Roxanne, I just wanted to mention that when you do get the audit report every year, there is Statement of financial health. I'm still comfortable with that. I don't want to overburden the people that are already there serving for us as volunteers. Is, I, is that reasonable? I think we can reasonably, we, it's not me, it's they, can reasonably produce a PL from the PL that we get every month. Um, I think they can produce a balance sheet from the same report. Um, I, I think that's a reasonable conclusion of it. Well, we'll take a look at what Munis can supply. Sure. Yeah. Is it is it reasonable to add a statement that says something like, uh, as far as the annual report, a comprehensive <laughs> statement of financial health, or including a comprehensive statement of financial health? I mean, through the budget process last year, there were some questions that came up because I said, hey, we need we put twenty five grand into a capital. Uh, but non-recurring fund. And the question was, is that enough? And the answer was, no. we're working on that. Okay. But it's more than we did last year and less than we need. Okay, so where are we going with this? Well, let's want to make one comment. If you read one request to be in no later than the end of the calendar year, the WPCA shall make reports to the town council about development, finances, and 
operate the subcommittee you want to. Right. I think it's there in the ordinance. It tells you what we're looking for. And then you work for Section one authority. Well, I can see in financing, I wouldn't say that that's profit and loss. I would say that's how are you, that's how you financing your operations as opposed to a true profit loss. So, so we can insert profit loss yeah, instead of profit financing. Yeah, whatever the word is. Instead of financing profit and loss. There is no profit, there is no loss. Right. I, mean, I know. So but that's a technical term. Right? Yeah. How would you say financial? Financial report. Nothing with the financial report. Okay, we're okay with that? Instead of financing financial. Yeah. I just don't want to have the discussion again. So, yes. Okay, are we okay with that? Well, fine. So, when requested, statute does not authorize a $1,000 a day. It authorizes a fine of $1,000, period. So I'm not sure where the authorization comes without it. I know the mayor indicated there was a fine of you know, tens of thousands of dollars left in the past. But that's not how the statute reads. So I'm not sure that it was an oversight of the statute that they really get $1,000 a day, and that's how people are using it, but that's not the words that are there. It just states a fine shall not be more than $1,000, period. Uh, second thing is on review of Ordinance 115, um, it states, in, which is the enactment of the IWFC, it states in accordance with Section 22A42C of uh, the Committee General Statutes, uh, that ordinance has been repealed, that statute has been repealed. So I think it's actually should be 42, not 42C. But basically our, our ordinance no longer has authority to, to exist in its current ordinance, so I would recommend it. Back and go back and look at that ordinance and uh, get the appropriate citation to establish that WWC. I don't know what section C used to say because it's no longer listed in the general sections. So. Yeah. I would be in favor of faith on this for tonight. Uh, in light of the same comments that we heard earlier, I think it needs more attention. And it's a shame we wasted a public hearing on this. And I would add that I would think the IWWC would be here in case we had any questions. So. Um, I was prepared to vote no, but I could go along with the table if anybody would like to make that motion. I'll make a motion that the table 
this of Fred. Before we go there, I, I also am mindful of the, the need to have more. I don't know, you know, are there instances where we have need of this ordinance? The state statute gives the authority. Yes, the difference, fundamental difference is the state would get the money, but we wouldn't. The town wouldn't. Other than that, is there a reason for the town to, to accept that liability as the one where it's in it? So I, don't, I don't know enough about it to understand that liability, but I could see where a resident or a developer that gets fined tens of thousands of dollars would see, would see a benefit to saying, I'm going to take this to court and be paying for it anyway. I don't know enough about it, but I, I would question the need for the ordinance to begin with. Yeah. If this ordinance mirrors another ordinance, would these problems exist in that one also? Different, 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 yeah, different statutes. Yeah. Any further discussion? Uh, I would prefer that we not get into too much detail in this ordinance uh, for two reasons. One, I recall a prior town planner saying sometimes you intentionally leave your word in vague so that you can have a commission or a board interpret it. Um, there is also a hearing panel, uh, which is the safeguard for a out-of-control wetlands officer. Um, so I'm okay with vagueness. I don't think we have to answer every single question. The second thing is that regarding whether this is going to cost the town money, whether we're going to go to court, whether we're going to write checks, the intent is to deter people from damaging wetlands. It's to put teeth in ordinances that we have that really aren't enforceable because we have to take offenders to court. So the intent is, is to deter, it's not to take people to court, it's not to spend the town's tax dollars um, fighting in court with hiring lawyers. Sometimes that happens, but you have to do that if you want to deter people from doing what's not supposed to be done in the ordinance. Yes. Um, having served several years on the Wetlands Commission, I would say that we, we did have some flagrant violations and we didn't have a whole lot to, we weren't able to do much of anything. The offenders essentially snubbed their nose at us and uh, and they were flagrant violations as I said and it was, it was very unfortunate. But I liken <coughs> the inability to find with a, with a, uh, with a violation to um, a speed limit of say 65 miles an hour and you're going 80 miles an hour you get pulled over, the cop comes up to your car and said, you know, you're going 80 miles an hour, but since there's no penalty and no fine, he just lets you go, and you go about your merry way. And that's kind of how I felt when we were on the Wetlands Commission, is that, uh, you know, there are, there are honest mistakes that occur with, with homeowners and, and places that maybe they're not aware of were actually wetlands, and there are others that are not so honest and, and uh, innocent. So I am in favor of a, of a finding ordinance, but um, like uh, Chairman Davis said, I would really like to see somebody from Wetlands here to answer questions we may have. Yeah. I want to reiterate, first of all, what Bill said, um, and let me add to that, you know, as far as using your same analogy with the speed limit, you don't wait until you realize that 85 is too fast for an area before you lower it to 65, you put in a speed limit that's designed for the road, keeping people safe on that road. So we don't need to wait for flagrant violations to put to put the capacity to find in place. We want to have that there already because we could, you know, if we wrote the ordinance after the fact, we could also see a lawsuit based on that. So. Any further discussion? To, to one question, where in where the inland water limits uh, regulations? The second question, the question I have is just realizes as uh, Council Member looks like, do we need a separate ordinance or should this really be rolled into Ordinance 115? Because you already have a fee structure for uh, ap applicants there. Why wouldn't you also have the penalty for violation? That same ordinance you established at MWC instead of having two different ordinances. Well, it's in, it was only one too, so. Well, I, I understand. I think of it as a zoning, but, but, but I'm looking at it now. Why have two ordinances 
and, and not one. You should, I, I would think that you would have one ordinance under IWWC, and, and it would, it, while it already includes the fees for certain activities that are required to come for well, review. You could, you could look at that and see if maybe it's just yeah. amending it. As opposed, to, right. As opposed to having a separate ordinance and just update. In addition to, since you're going to update 115 anyway because of the statute that's been repealed, right. it might be sensible just to put the content there. Right. So, Um, only if the um, original motion is changed. Yeah. If we do what the, the Council Friends suggest, yes, because it would be taking a different ordinance and throwing it one time. If it comes back substantially the if, same. If it comes back substantially the same, different, different we'd have than to have we have current now, mm -hmm. then we'd have to come back with another public hearing. Yeah. But if minor changes to say a thousand dollar fine yeah. versus a thousand dollar per day, uh, and a few other tweaks that even like. Table it tonight and then come back like what Kevin says. You can just work on the same right. public hearing. Right. If you not approve it tonight, then it's like the clock starts all over. And yeah, I think even the change of all you're doing for quarters one fifteen is changing from forty two C to forty two, uh, and not changing anything else on the public hearing for that. So I will second down Marshall's motion. Motion's been uh, made, uh, seconded. Roxanne, would you call the roll? Um, Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Gabordi? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Sons? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion to the table of um, houses. Um, let's see, where are we? Okay, uh, town council mm -hmm. summer meeting schedule. Uh, typically, we cancel um, at least one meeting during the summer, possibly two. Um, I see that somebody's already tried to take up our July, second meeting in July <laughs> um, meeting. So I guess that means that one's not available to cancel. Um, so should we look at the um, either the first or the second meeting in August? Um, so in other words, July 9th is <laughs> okay. We could cancel we July ninth. We could cancel the first meeting of the month rather than the second. Yeah. Roxanne, anything you know about on uh, July 9th we would need to meet? Um, just uh, the Ledger Town Center Committee was going to give a report, but I can ask them if you can come to the next okay. meeting. Okay. I will put a couple of things on the next meeting. So though. we can cancel July 9th. And how about would you? Prefer to just then wait till the July 23rd meeting to see what we have coming up in August. Does that make sense? Sure. And Roxanne, do we need to vote on? Um, you can be a consensus. Consensus cancel the July 9th meeting. Uh, yes. Yeah. Aye. Uh, okay. Yes, we have a consensus. So, so, so could we hold? in July or August? Yes. Okay, and what date? We'll start on my left. 10 to 15 August. 12 to 26 August. Okay. So that would be our first meeting. <laughs> well, yeah. come back. I'll be, I'll be out for the 23rd of July. Okay. We okay. wait the 12th through the 26th of um, July. I'll be signed with. Okay, so we have two people that would be out for the so July 23rd. I will be taking vacation. It's undecided which days. Okay. You need to know now. Okay, but no meeting. Okay, so right now, right now, no meeting on July 9th. And then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, are we going into executive session? I would ask that you not do that. I, I don't wish to. I would ask that you not proceed okay. with the following. So um, we are not going to discuss work session issues. Um, I'm not going to... Motion to adjourn. <laughs> That's right. Motion's been made and seconded. The meeting is adjourned without objection. <laughs>